Um, thanks so much, boys. It is absolutely fantastic to be back. Um, you have no idea how much this school means to me, and so I'm really grateful to be here to talk to you today. Um, when I got asked to come back and speak by Mr Hill and Jake, um, I wasn't really sure what to talk about because, you know, it's, it's a bit of a thing. What, are you, what am I supposed to talk about when I come back? It's a big deal for me. And Mr Hill kindly offered to give me some World War I quotes because he knows how much we love them. Um, but I, I had to climb. So I'm guessing since I beat cancer, I'm supposed to be able to dish out some pretty incredible life advice. Um, people tend to believe that the secret to happiness is hidden somewhere within bags of chemotherapy. But I don't think it is, and I don't think I can, but I'll give it a shot. Um, the next thing I'd say would be to take your mocks seriously. And I know what it's like to stand up here and hear that coming from someone, and I know I've probably lost half the audience with that. But seriously, it's really, really important. If my mocks hadn't have been any good, I wouldn't have got UE, and I'd be sitting down there doing year 14 instead of standing up here. Embrace each day. Um, I was always dying to get home. I was dying for the weekend. I was dying for the holidays. And then before I knew it, I was dying in Christchurch Hospital. And I know now that it's so important to make most of it while you can. Now, I, like most people, always really hated those cliched phrases about living life to the fullest and making the most of it and all that. But now I've been through what I have, I realise that I only hated them because I didn't really understand them. I don't think you really can understand something like that until something like what happens to me happens or it happens to someone close to you. And it's very well for someone to paint a picture where one day you're going to school, you're playing sport, you're hanging out with mates, with your girlfriend, with your family, you're living a normal life, and then the very next week you're battling for your life in a hospital bed. But I could never have really imagined that or pictured it or thought it could have happened until it happened to me. However, I think the most important thing that I've learned is to live day by day. This is another phrase that I used to hate because I don't understand it. I always liked to plan far ahead, always had a five-year plan for myself and where I wanted to be. And sure, this held me in really good stead. I don't want to put Mr Webster out of a job. But the thing is, going through this experience has taught me how to take things day at a time and focus on short-term goals, getting through with each day. If I had have started this process and looked at the times that lay ahead of me, the 100 days of chemo, the terrible procedures, then I wouldn't have made it through it because it just would have seemed too much. By knowing that I just had to get through that day's chemotherapy and not worrying about the fact that there was more tomorrow and the day after and the day after that, it made it all seem manageable and bearable. Taking things day by day lets you focus on the now and really appreciate life. Tied on with that is the ability to find little bits of light in the darkness because sometimes that's all that you have left. You need to be able to focus on the small things. Sure, I have a head in my head in a sick bucket right now, but I'll never feel this sick again in my life. Once you enjoy these little things so much, you, can, you can't begin to imagine how amazing the big things in life can feel. It's something I remind myself of each day when I wake up, and it makes every single day a better one. I already know that I don't think I have the power of words to make people understand how delicately their world is balanced around them. It's not only whether you could get sick or hurt or killed, it's everyone around you and in your family. And your life could change beyond recognition in a week, a minute, a second. But the point of that isn't to scaremonger, it's to try and make you understand how much you take for granted. So what should you do about it? Well, not necessarily give money to charities like Canteen here today, or donate your time, or volunteer, or feel sorry for other people or situations which you cannot change. What you need to do, although all those things are fantastic things to do, and they do help, but what you really need to do is you need to be grateful for the people in your life and for your ability to live a normal life. It seems impossible, but next week you might be fighting to cling on to that life. So when you sit down for your next annoying family dinner, enjoy it because you never know the next week you might not get to eat with your family for three months. And sure, it's melodramatic and it's overly emotive, but it's true and it's what happened to me. No matter how much you tell yourself that it won't happen to you, believe me, that's not how it works. 
I was never going to be that guy that got cancer, but it turns out I was. But like I said, this morbid reality isn't a reason to be afraid. It's the opposite of that. Live each day with passion and pride to its very fullest because you are able to. Every morning I wake up, I know that I'm on borrowed time. Every day that I live is another one longer than I was supposed to, and it spurs me on. One last thing, please give blood, guys. You know the blood people that come a couple of times a year? Well, please sign up and help them out. While I was in hospital, I had about 20 litres of blood. And I actually remember the first transfusion I had. It was the first week of my chemo, and I really wasn't loving it. It was a pretty bad day. And so the nurse brings in this big bag of blood, and she hooks up to the machine. And um, I locked eyes with my dad, who was sitting across the room. And he just said, that blood might have come out of from someone from St. Bede's. <laughs> what? And I, I sat there, and I was shocked. And then I spent every other blood transfusion after that trying to figure out whether I'd rather have blood from someone from college, or someone from Beads, or even someone from Shirley. I mean, it, um, it really is so good to be back and see you all again. It's a huge part of me, this school, as it is for every old boy. And um, it really feels like coming home today. So all the best to you for the rest of the year. All the best to you for the rest of your life. I'm sure I'll see you around a bit again. And enjoy your holidays, boys. Thanks very much, lads.